Mary here. Today we're going to be going over the Enercan heat pump calculator. So it's um, required to use when you're modeling cold climate heat pumps. It also does air source heat pumps and unknown heat pumps and you can combine multiple heat pumps together to get the info you need for HOT 2000. So we're just going to jump into it. So this is the general tab. Um, there is an instructions tab and a log which goes over the previous iterations of the calculator and stuff like that. But we'll start here. So the house location, this is a province or territory the house is located in. It is possible that you might have a house in one province and then the weather locations for another province. That does happen. So just make sure you're filling that stuff in properly. You're going to pick the location, obviously. And these bottom two little boxes here, the top one is for e-files. If the requirements of the program have been met for them to get a rebate for the eligible heat pump, you would say yes if you're modeling the e-file. And if you're doing a d-file that has an existing heat pump, and you can come here and you can say, I'm going to be recommending a air source heat pump, a cold climate heat pump, or the replacement of the existing heat pump with the air source or the replacement of existing with a cold climate. And just keep in mind in Nova Scotia and Quebec, there are no eligible Energy Star heat pumps. They are doing cold climate only. So if you're in Nova Scotia or Quebec, only use the cold climate options. So we're going to do, we'll just say we're going to add a cold climate heat pump as well. And then down here, we got a couple other tabs. So this is where you enter the cold climate heat pump here. This is where you'd enter a standard air source heat pump or a unknown heat pump. And then if you're doing the D file, that's where it's going to populate. If you want to know what how to use the upgrade, like what numbers to use for the upgrade, that'd be here. If you're doing an E file, that'd be here. And then if you're doing new home construction or energy star files, they would go here. So we're going to go to the cold climate tab. And the easiest thing, best way to start, find your HRI number. Uh, best to look it up on the Enercan eligible list if it's on there. Hit import data and it's going to populate all the info that we're going to need. And then you'll also see here, is it eligible for greener homes? Is it in the NEAP database? Is it Energy Star? Should populate your make and model. Sometimes it might not do the indoor model. If there's multiple indoor units that could be combined with that outdoor unit, um, it might not show up at all. So just you can type them in there. And all of this should populate as well. If you have any notes, anything special, you can write them down there. Basically, all you need to do is come up to these green cells. And we're going to say, for this case, let's just say it's at the D file. It's the central split system in this case. Um, a good thing to keep in mind is under the mini multi-split, you can see it's ducted or ductless. So in this case, what it means for ducted is if you have a compact ducted system, like say in an attic, something along those lines, um, you would click this instead of central. Central splits only for fully ducted throughout the home. Um, mini split ducted be used otherwise. And you want to count the number of warm air registers as each one qualifies as a head essentially. But in our case, we've got a central split. So I don't need to indicate the number of heads. And if we had a couple identical systems that are exactly the same with the same HRI number, you'd put that in there. It'll do the math for you. Basically, it's going to tell us here under the D tab, here's how we model everything. So I'm kind of in the way at the bottom. You can see it tells us it needs to be restricted at negative 22 Celsius, which is negative 7.6 Fahrenheit. Here's the COPs to use. Here's the capacity. Here's our cold climate information. And here's how we put in our make and model and how to model it here as well. If it was mini split, it would tell us how many heads to put in. I have seen sometimes that the indoor and outdoor unit models come up here in the manufacturer spot. Obviously, don't enter them that way in Hot 2000. And I've also seen the capacity maintenance show up over here and the COP show up over here. So just make sure, kind of double check your numbers, put them in properly. And since over here I said we're recommending a cold climate heat pump, go to the D file upgrade tab going to say use this HSPF, use this SEER, set it here, check cold climate. That's how you're going to model the upgrade to trigger it on the portal. And let's just go back over here and let's say this is that e-file and we could go to our e-file tab and it would say enter it like this. And you'll also notice because of the additions to the e-file, adjustments must be made to the d-file. Ensure you check the d-file base tab and input the new values. So sometimes you need to go back and update the d-file to make sure that the rebate triggers properly. And next we're going to go over how to model a unknown heat pump. So I'm just going to clear our data there, go to the air source heat pump tab. We're going to pretend we don't have an HRI number um, and that this is a D file. Let's say it's a mini split system. It's got two heads. Um, Energy star, if we don't know, I'm going to say no. If they're identical systems, put it there. And then is it known values or unknown values? If it's known values, you know, put them in, put in your make, outdoor, indoor, 
put all the info down here that you have. If you don't have the cutoff temp, just leave a blank. But we're going to say unknown. It's going to default to 5.9 HSPF region 5 and 10 for sear. And then in order to get our heating capacity, here it says 1.25 times cooling load if unknown. So we go to our hot 2000 file. We have to have the entire home built, the air test in all the windows and doors, like files got to be fully completed. And then what we would do on this tab is go and select 1.25. We're going to hit Alt C, wait for the pop-up to come up. Then we're going to close it down. So we just click OK, go back to our heating and cooling system, to our heat pump, and it's going to give us a capacity of 24,534. So then we enter that into the calculator on the ASHP tab, and then you can see here it's going to tell us this is how we model it. We're going to put in actually a slightly reduced capacity, same HSPF, same sear, leave it at balance point. One thing to note, in the ERS, it does say that when you model an unknown heat pump and you do the 1.25 times cooling load if it's above 24,000 you need to reduce it to 24,000 but you'll see here it's built into the calculator so if I was to say that this is 56,000 BTUs per hour and I go back to my D file it's the same capacity so you don't have to worry about it here in this case and that's everything you need to know with the heat pump calculator so if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below and I will catch you next time